Hey there! In this video we are going to look at doing some transformations with the basic tangent function and seeing how making various changes in the equation causes changes in the graph. Alright, so we're going to graph a few different tangent functions that involve several different transformations. We're not going to look at it to the detail that we did with sine and cosine functions because there's fewer things that you're going to model using a tangent function and you're not usually going to involve so many transformations. So uh, I've written this here, um, the same kind of structure we had with our sine and cosine functions that were transformed where there was an A value in front, a B value in there, a C value there. I left off the D. You could certainly put it there if you want, but there's not very often where you have a vertical shift in a tangent function, uh, but you could certainly do it in exactly the same way that you did for sine and cosine if that became necessary. So for this first one here, there's two different changes that have happened. We have a number in front here where we've called that a value. Now you might have gotten the habit for sine and cosine of just thinking of that number as the amplitude. And the reason it works for sine and cosine is because the amplitude is normally one, and so one each way there, and then when you put a three in front, it becomes 3. Now the reason it becomes 3, if you'll remember, is because any point that is 1 away ends up being 3 times as far away. So really what's happening there is you have a vertical expansion by 3, by a factor of 3. So it's not just the max and the min that change, it's every single point. Now the trouble with a tangent function is there isn't really a max or a min because it heads up to infinity and down to negative infinity, so it's hard to think about how that changes the graph. What we're going to have to do is we're going to track a few different points and expand those vertically by 3, and then that's going to be enough to get us the shape right. It's just going to affect the shape a little bit. The other change that's happened here is this value and here, this B value. Now that's going to affect a few things about our graph, but that represents a horizontal compression because it's a number bigger than one, it actually does the opposite when it affects x like that. It's a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. So that affects a couple different things. First of all, it affects the period in the same way it does for sine and cosine, except that we have to think here, the period normally for the tangent graph is pi. The period is half as much as it is for sine and cosine. And so if we horizontally compress that basic tan function where the period is pi, if we compress it by half, that's going to become pi over 2. Now you might have got used to using a little quick rule for sine and cosine where you say that the period is 2 pi divided by the b value. That works for sine and cosine because 2 pi is the normal period for just the basic sine and cosine so that when you make a change to it, you're working from there. But for this, you have to think of it as period is pi divided by the b value. If you want to have a quick little rule for tangent functions, it needs to be this instead. So any way you get it, the period is pi over 2 in this case. Now the other thing that it's going to affect here is where the asymptotes are, because the tangent function, that's kind of mostly what defines the look of the graph is the fact that it has these asymptotes. So normally, normally the asymptotes for the tangent function, the first one is at pi over 2. So normally there's one that's there. So normally the first one's at pi over 2. And then the rest of them are pi away from that. So you have the next one is there. And the first one the other way is pi away that way. So that's normally where those asymptotes are. So the expression was pi over 2 plus multiples of pi. Because the first one's at pi over 2 and then they're multiples of pi away. If we're horizontally compressing everything by a half, all of those are going to get closer to the y-axis. So, so this one that's pi over 2 is now going to be, instead of that distance, it's going to be this distance. It's going to be half as much. So we're going to have an asymptote there instead. That one's going to be moved to there. And this one that is 3 pi over 2 away is going to be half that much. It's actually going to be only here, which is 3 pi over 4. That's where that one's going to be. So instead of on my grid here uh, having eight squares in between them, normally we're going to have only four squares in between them. This one that was out there is instead going to be here. All right. So instead of it being pi over 2, the first one, and pi apart, it's going to be the first ones at pi over 4, 
plus multiples of pi over 2 apart, the period. Multiples of the period apart. So we can write it like that. What you can actually do without having to think about it on the grid is take this thing and just divide by 2. Divide this by 2, you get pi over 4. And divide this by 2, n pi, you get n pi over 2. If you just divide that expression, each of the terms by 2, you get where the new asymptotes are. So that's also going to be one here. We can draw. And then that one there. We can draw that as well. And then there's going to be one more I can fit on the other side. So that's where the asymptotes are going to be. And that, as I said, that's a big part of trying to draw this graph. That's the main feature of a tangent graph is all those asymptotes. We don't know too many points along the way. We know a few. And probably the obvious one to start at is right in the middle here. Tangent of 0 is 0. And even with these transformations, tangent of 2 times 0 is still 0, times 3 is still 0. So that point is invariant. It's not going to change. What is going to change, though, is every other point. Now, if we, if we look at just drawing the graph um, from what we know about the basic tangent function, the basic tangent function, as we said, the asymptote was there at pi over 2, but halfway to the asymptote normally at pi over 4, or 45 degrees, 45 degrees is, has a tangent of 1. So if we're going to multiply by 2 in here, we need something half as much. So instead, this is the point that's going to normally have the, the tangent value of 1. Halfway out to the asymptote, normally it's going to be 1. So normally, if this wasn't here, that 3, that's what our, that's what our graph would look like in between those asymptotes. Halfway out to the asymptote, it hits a value of 1. Except we do have the 3 here. And so those points, I'm going to take that curve away, and so those points are going to be three times as far away because we have a vertical expansion by three. So if we're going to draw this, instead of drawing them there, halfway out to the asymptote, normally we're going to have one, but we're going to have, it's going to be three instead of one, right? You can just confirm that those values work because if you put pi over eight in, because that's what that is, pi over eight times two is pi over four, Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and then 3 times that much is 3. And the same goes on the other side. So then to draw the graph, that's going to be enough to, to get the shape of it right. So we can draw one of the branches or one of the parts of the curve there. I missed that second point a little bit, but you get the idea there. And then to draw the rest of them, we can just use those three guide points to get us to get the shape right. So I'll draw all those in. And then draw the curves in. All right, and then you have your graph of y equals 3 tan to x. All right, let's try another one. All right, so this second function we're going to look at actually has three things involved. Here we have a negative in front, which is actually going to mean that we have a vertical reflection. And so when we draw the curves, we're going to have to keep that in mind, that they're actually going to go downhill instead of uphill. We have a B value of 1 half here, which is going to mean that we have a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2, right? Because it kind of does the opposite. A number smaller than 1 means that the value is bigger. It's expanded by 2. And then this fact that we have this x minus pi over 2 instead of in here instead of just an x means we're going to have a horizontal shift or a phase shift of pi over 2 to the right. So we have those three changes involved here. And we're going to have to think about how they affect things. First of all, this 1 half right here, this horizontal expansion by 2 is going to affect the period. The period is normally pi for the basic tangent function, but now it's going to be twice as big, so it's going to be 2 pi. So we know that the period is going to be 2 pi. When we draw the curve, we're going to have to take that into account. Now, the other thing that we have to think about is the asymptotes. And as you saw, that b value affected the asymptotes in the first one that we drew. That affects the asymptotes, but you have to think about this, that this is going to affect the asymptotes as well, because Expanding or compressing horizontally, or sliding it, shifting it horizontally, both of those are going to change the location of the asymptotes. So let's think about this. First of all, we'll think about it visually on the graph, and then we can work with an expression. So normally the first asymptote is at pi over 2, and then they're pi apart, so it would be like that. 
and that, and this. So instead, you have, you're gonna have two changes here. First of all, they're gonna be twice as far apart. So instead of that first one being pi over two away, it's gonna be pi away, double that distance away. So let's just follow each one here. So the first one was gonna be that, if we apply this horizontal expansion by two. And then the rest of them would be this far away. So you'd have to go another two pi for the next one here. You'd have to go two pi to get to the other one here. That's normally a good strategy is just draw the first two actually to the right and the left and then just space them all equally out like that once you know the spacing near the period. Now before I draw the rest though, we have to think about how this affects it because this is going to affect it as well because we've got the spacing of them right, but we don't have the location right because the whole thing is going to be shifted pi over 2 to the right. So every single one of these is going to be shifted pi over 2, which is one space here. That's going to be shifted to the right. That's going to be shifted to the right. That's going to be shifted to the right. So we can draw those in here. That's where that first one's going to be. And then this one's going to be here. This one's going to be here. And we can draw the rest of them the exact same way, just that same spacing. Once we have a few of them, four spaces away, that one's going to be there. This one is going to be here. And that gives us our, our graph here. All right, or that gives us the setup because the asymptotes are the biggest thing you need to, in order to draw a tangent graph. Now, as I said, you could work with the expression to get the location of these just starting by what you have normally, which is pi over 2 plus pi times n. That's normally where the asymptotes are located. And you can actually just apply these two transformations to this expression one at a time, right? So the expansion happens first, so you can take this whole thing and multiply it by 2. So in other words, you know, 2 times pi over 2 gives you pi, and 2 times pi n is 2 pi n. So that's, that's applying this expansion by 2, right? The first one's at pi, and then it's this far apart. And then you can apply this horizontal shift to the right. Horizontal shift to the right is like taking this thing and adding on pi over 2. If I add on pi over 2, I don't want to add pi over 2 to both of those things. I just want to add pi over 2 to the first one. The, the horizontal shift to the right does not change this. It doesn't change how far apart they are. They're still multiples of 2 pi apart. It just changes this where they're located, this first one. So if we add this pi over 2 to this pi, right, 1 pi, which is 2 pi over 2, plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2, that's where the first one is, and then they're multiples of 2 pi apart. So you can tell this value here is 3 pi over 2, and then we add on 2 pi to get to any other one. So if you're okay working with those expressions, that's another way to, find, to figure out where these are. You can just write the expression for the original thing and then apply those transformations to it. So maybe I'll get rid of some of this so that we can fit the graph, and I'll just put our final result there, which was 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, as where our asymptotes are, all right? Now, to draw the shape of a tangent function, if you have two asymptotes to draw one curve, the simplest way is to think, okay, in between those two, normally it's in the middle. And then in between that point and the asymptote to the right, it is normally one unit up. And halfway to the other asymptote, it's one unit down, right? And so if we didn't have this, that's how we would draw our points and then we would draw a curve like this. The thing is though, with this vertical reflection, instead this point is going to be down here and this point is going to be up here. So instead of drawing it going uphill like that, we're going to draw it going downhill and then we can use those three points and the asymptotes to fill that curve in and the rest of it is just drawing a nice smooth curve that goes through there as best you can. All right. You want to make sure you draw it so it's always getting closer to that asymptote if you can. And then we can just draw the, the those three guide points in between each pair of asymptotes and draw the curve from there. Let me draw some curves. And then you have that graph, the graph of minus tan one half x minus pi over two again involving all three of those things right it has been 
horizontally expanded, so that affects the period and where, how far apart the asymptotes are. It has been shifted by pi over 2 to the right, which affects where the asymptotes are and the points are, and then it's been vertically reflected so that those curves go downhill instead of uphill. All right, so that is using the concept of transformations to create graphs of tangent functions if you're given the equation. Thank you.